Three, take four. It is my oath as the basilisk and chief executive of our order before our brothers that I will never exercise true humbleness before God and manifest justice toward our business to protect the order at every cost and at the risk of everything, even my very life, from all who may oppose it in its interest and many undertakings, to show fidelity toward all my brothers, particularly those who may be inferior in counsel, as is this infant, my son in the order, our lifeblood and the golden thread of the next generation. As such, this boy, as he grows into a man, shall ever have my adoration and thus that of the order. To be at peace with my brothers at all times and to protect my brothers at all costs and at the risk of everything, even my very life, from all who may oppose them in their interests and many undertakings. I vow, I vow to, to destroy, if so commanded, any foe without reluctance, without sentiment, and without remorse. And the so we christen this child of Giuseppe John. I admire the hunter, not for his swiftness, but for his vigilance and patience. How he watches his game from a distance and waits, deciding precisely when to strike. It is that decision upon which everything hinges. If it could only be that easy. If it could only be that easy. I could not believe she said that. 
Oh, I was so upset. She was just so rude. Excuse me. Where can I find Peter Cardone? He should be back in a minute. Did you want me to get him for you? No, that's all right. Kismet? What's the matter with you? Just leave him alone. Kismet? That's a pretty name. It's my grandmother's name. It means fate. What's your name? Giuseppe. It's Italian. What do you want with Mr. Cardone? I'm here to meet with him. For a job. The head cook. Kismet! Why aren't you back at your dorm? I just got back from the library. He's looking for Mr. Cardone. Young lady, get back to your dorm right now. So you're looking for Mr. Cardone, huh? Well, are you coming in or what? Thank you, ma'am. What do you want with Mr. Cardoni? I'm Linda, Mr. Cardoni's wife. Yes, I have a great passion for food. My husband can't come tonight. We've had a drowning with one of the students. So what should I do? That's really not my problem. Now if you'll excuse me. <laughs> Staff housing is across the road. Tell Eugene I sent you. He'll get you a key and a place to stay. They'll start training you for breakfast in the morning. I think they get up at 5.30. Does that sound okay to you? Or would you rather wait and meet my husband in the morning? Does that mean I have the job? I'll let Eugene determine that. But if it's any sentiment to you, you're a great swimmer. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't been there. Fair enough? What should I call you? Giuseppe. Giuseppe Jones. The boss had failed to inform me that Cardoni was married. He probably figured that I would have found out sooner or later and didn't bother. There isn't much that be kept secret in this line of work. A digger tends to know things. Still, I can't understand how a man with Cardoni's reputation could be married. But then again, history has proven that even the worst of men can attract a mate.
addition to that, you're responsible for keeping your line and your area maintained and clean and sanitized. The true test of manhood, though, is fidelity. Always, okay, it's fidelity. Ryan, we got some paperwork to take care of. In Germany, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party had seized control. And in defiance of the Versailles Treaty, they had rebuilt Germany's military forces. By 1936, Hitler could look down proudly on an army that had already reoccupied the Rhineland and was soon to threaten the borders of half of the nations of Europe. Marriage is a sacred institution, an oath to God that should not be broken under any circumstance. Only atheists break their vows to God. And certainly, I'm no atheist. How can I be in this line of work? Almost always, I cast my vote against infidels. As a digger, is it my duty to make that final determination? I have seen too many otherwise arrogant and selfish men and women cower at the face of death. Some to the point of whimpering for their lives, others to the point of defecating on themselves. Even our most hardened victims make attempts to come to terms with the world beyond at the point that their mortality is rendered bankrupt. But like me, they soon realize that for redemption, it is far too late. I know, I'm a lost soul, and yet it is my job to identify the others. Men like this Peter Cardone.
Even four years later, I still find myself waking up in cold sweats. Haunted by the image of a charred body of this young girl. Whose only crime was that her father's time had come. My son, Murphy's ninth birthday party, uh, it's definitely uh, just an honor. And I just really want to thank all of you for making this uh, such a special year, not only for me, but uh, for, for all my family as well. Uh, Murphy will be accepting gifts uh, at this time. Uh, he does take uh, credit card and personal check. Murphy, what are you doing? This is for other people. This is not for you. The, it's your birthday, but you got to consider other people, Murphy. This is not acceptable. You need to learn, son. Very disappointing. Son, you need to understand, it is not just about you. It is your birthday, but, but there's a lot of other people here that you need to consider. This is your party, son, but it is not just about you and your feelings. And you need to, you need to apologize to the guests here, son. I just really want to thank you for being here and thank you for uh, just again your support and uh, there's plenty of food here so please enjoy and uh, please uh, make sure you uh, bring all the gifts up here as well for my son so he's, uh, he's definitely expecting a, uh, a hefty payload um, on this ninth birthday of his. Thank you. abuses children private or in public is a coward, weak and feeble, insecure and ungrateful for the gifts that God has given him. I have considered the nature of this man, Peter Cardone. He's temperamental, passionate, with little control over his emotions and utter disrespect for those who love him. I have considered his nature and found him wanting. This too will be a piece of cake. I have always thrived on exercise. It is an opportunity to release frustration and to punish my flesh for all the sins it has forced me to commit. 300 push-ups and sit-ups in the morning, 300 push-ups and sit-ups at night. This way, I do not feel guilty for the dozens of flapjacks and beef patties that I consume in the course of any given day. Though to me, day and night, 
Hours, minutes, they mean very little. Useful tools for the others, but not us. Tompkins, make sure the sauce is I managed to convince the head cook right. that I needed a room to myself on account of being a very light sleeper. Of course, he agreed. He would do anything for his master chef who could feed a bunk load of campers faster than anyone else in the kitchen. Where are you going? It doesn't matter where I'm going because this conversation is over. Why can't we talk about this? Because talking is all we've ever done. That is God so is not nowhere. true. We never talk. Look you where always run away, now. just like you're doing now. Where are you going? You cannot leave. This is ridiculous. It's not over. It is over. Look at you. You almost hit me, your wife. I can't believe you did that. So what are you going to do now? What's, what's the next step? I don't know which is more surprising. The incident that just occurred the fact that nobody other than myself has so much even ventured to a window to investigate. As loud as they were screaming, people had to have heard. This time, I'll be ready. Unfortunately, as my watch agonized past midnight, I grew skeptical. As a new day approached, my skepticism proved correct. Yesterday's fireworks would not repeat themselves. It's another cloudy Wednesday night here in Butler. You're listening to WTJY. I'm Mike Collins, and this is Joel Sanchez. And they don't pay no gain. But I'm dying inside. I had spent a lot of time in this pickup lately and had affectionately given it the name Angela. It was my mother's name and I had been a mother to me through this and various other intricate tags. I thought of my mother for a moment, though I knew little of her, only fantasies that I had invented as a child.
Dylan Butler. This is still Wednesday night, and I'm still your host, Mike Collins. This is Joe Smith. And so it was time. That's the bridge. Don't throw me away. On this Tuesday night here in Butler, my name is Mike Collins, with you till midnight. It doesn't matter where I'm going, this conversation Shut is over. Why can't we talk about this? Because talking is all we've ever done. That is so not nowhere. true. We never talk. You always talk about what you're doing now. Where are you going? You cannot leave. This is ridiculous. It's not over. Look at you. You almost hit me your butt. Then, I understood. You just worry about your tip, alright? It's about time. I'm sorry I'm late. My car wouldn't start. You should warm up your car for five minutes or so before taking it anywhere. It might help. Listen, pal, I'm not paying you for advice on my car trouble. Time is money. What? what? I said I can't believe you're on time for a change. Time is money. What's the matter? I don't know. Have you ever had deja vu? can't say that I have, though I've heard of it. You're probably the only person on the planet who hasn't. No, I'm certain there are others. What are you, an alien or something? Ricky. Ricky, I need you to do me a favor. How do you know my name? In two minutes, a man named Peter Cardone will come through that door. I want you to proposition him. Disgusting. You don't have to follow through. Just make him the offer. Isn't that a trapment or something? Don't worry, I'm not a cop. I'm something else. Hi. How you doing? Fine, how are you? Fine. I'm good. What would you like tonight? Uh... Get in uh, Augustinian. Sure. So, you from around here? <laughs> yeah, I've been around. I've never seen you before. I, I don't think I've been in here before, actually. Well, I'm from around here. I get off at 3.30 if you're interested. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm not.
Though impetuous, Peter Condoni was a man faithful to his wife and to his marriage vows. That I could respect, that I could honor. Besides, by now I suspected that Peter Condoni was a glider. In my inquiries, I had discovered that when Cardoni was 16, he was caught shoplifting, and this offense was subsequently put on his juvenile record. Cardoni never would forget his father's abuse to the extent that the next night, he dropped out of school and ran away from home. Cardoni was not a stranger to the streets of New Jersey where he grew up, and he quickly learned how to make a living waiting tables at nightclubs and bartending. After three years of waiting tables, giving advice to drunks, and paying rent at cheap hotels. Cardoni realized that the restaurant business could never be his ultimate destiny. There was just not enough money in it. He always had to keep a bank, which meant he could never spend the tips he earned the night before unless he had enough to make change for the following night. He also despised this because it meant he always had to have his cash on him. And this always made him nervous, walking the streets of Newark late at night. On top of this, by the time he cashed out at the end of the shift and gave his bus of the 2% he had earned, he still ended up almost broke after rent and basic living expenses. It was at this time when Peter Cardoni met Reverend Anthony Turrentine. Hello, this is uh, Reverend Turrentine. Reverend Turrentine. Yep. It's Peter. Hey, you can call me Anthony, right? Remember that. Yeah, sorry. I, f I forgot. <clears throat> um, that's okay. Hey, I, I, uh, I need a job. Uh, it's, you know, something I can do. At this point in Cardoni's life, Reverend Turrentine was a young preacher seeking out new churches to plant in that both he and his father were fundamentalist preachers who had placed exceptional emphasis on church growth and the recruiting of young leaders. What can I do for you? I can't, uh, I can't do the restaurant business anymore. <clears throat> right. So, uh, do you, do you think you could help me? Please? Pete. Pete. Why don't, why don't, why don't we pray together? Why don't you pray with me? Okay? Mm-hmm. The minister proceeded to recite the sinner's prayer, Lord? insisting that Peter repeat it. As we go through this time of struggle, I want you to uh, help Pete and help me to guide Pete as we go through challenges, go through the changes that are inevitable. Just help us, Lord, to uh, be together, to be true friends. After two or three sentences and just as many angry tears, Anthony said, Welcome to the fold, my friend. I discovered that they had cut up Cardoni pretty good, and the next day, he was fired from his restaurant job for not having his bank. From that brief conversation on, Peter Cardoni and Anthony Turrentine were inseparable. In fact, Anthony took his young prodigy everywhere and eventually had him move into his home, much to the chagrin of his father's congregation, who at one point thought their interests might be homosexual. Anthony's father had cautioned his son about bringing another man into his home, but Anthony came off as headstrong and idealistic. 
He quoted Matthew 25 often in his sermons, and against his father and the church board's advice, proceeded to provide Cardoni with a spare room in his private parsonage. It was Anthony who, two months later, introduced Cardoni to his wife, Linda, who was a young sister in the faith just recently converted. Cardoni and Linda were married six months after they met, and their first son was born three months after that. Outraged by Peter's lack of self-control, Anthony's father put both Peter and Linda out of the church. But Anthony still secretly married them in Pennsylvania, where it was easy to get a marriage license when they decided to elope. When Peter Cardoni suspected that Anthony and Linda were having an affair, he didn't explode. He merely simmered. He wanted to be sure. He had to be sure. You know, I was, uh, I was wondering, Anthony, why don't you have a wife? I mean, no offense, you're a pretty good looking guy. <laughs> Marriage isn't all about looks, Peter. Marriage is the Lord's commitment. Hey, I, I know. I was, I'm just asking. <laughs> Look, why are you asking so many questions? I don't need a wife right now. Then, uh, why don't you leave mine alone? What did you say to me? I just said some things, that's all. Just, just leave her alone. <laughs> I can forgive this a couple of times, but, but no more. I just hear some things, that's all. Just leave it all alone. He accused me of having an affair with his wife. Is that true? Then that's gonna be your justice. How you gonna beat up a man who stands for the integrity of his family? Such a man should be given a medal, not a concussion. You go to the hospital. You apologize to Peter Cordoni. You pay his medical bills, you apologize to his family, and then you're going to give him $100,000 from your personal account. I'm on a business. <laughs> Not the Cosa Nostra. Peter Cardoni did not accept Anthony's apology as readily as expected. Sure, he accepted the money and the payment of the bills, but in his heart, something else was agitated in Peter Cardoni, his pride, and there was nothing more dangerous to a man than that. Cardoni could never forgive Anthony for what he did, and his brutal response only made him more certain of the guilt that both Anthony and his wife shared. He quickly grew to hate them both. The worst part of it all though was that Cardoni didn't even think twice about how Anthony Turnitin could have possibly amassed such a gross amount of money. This would be his downfall. Peter Cardoni was a man who had lost the edge. He was what the business called a prime. He beat his wife and children in public. He only abided by perhaps 20% of his own personal religious convictions. He was reckless and though he was responsible for hundreds of people as both minister and schoolmaster, he seemed ready and willing to throw away his entire life. The business thrived on men like Peter Cardone, men who pretended to be shepherds, but in their hearts had the acumen of a serpent and a ferocity of a savage wolf. And yet, still, I consider him not nearly as guilty as his wife, or even Anthony Turrentine. And so I couldn't give the order. How could I?
but they did it anyway. It was the first time in my own experience that two ferrets had defied the work of a digger. I intended on finding out why. A digger was essential to the business. Without us, ferrets could move around undetected, without accountability, without order. There's no such thing as chaos. Even chaos has limitations, boundaries, even rules. Chaos cannot follow a pattern or be ordered. But this is a rule, so even chaos is confined to certain standards and limitations and orders. And yet now the rules were changing, and I didn't understand why. Good job, Giuseppe. Was it glad? Yeah. So what? Boss didn't tell me that. So what do you want? To get paid extra? No. Just wish I knew, that's all. Look, you don't need to know anything more about Peter Cardone than what I've already told you. And what you've managed to find out in your unauthorized dig. What you did was wrong, sir. No. What you did was wrong. He was a prime tag who got what was coming to him. Okay? What good are diggers when you veto our recommendations? What about the boss? That's been taken care of. Now, stop asking so many questions. Even now, after so many years of loyal service, I know so little about the business in which I am engaged. There are so many secrets, but no secret can be kept forever. Any organization with secrets will eventually crumble. And it was then when I realized that the business had been plotting and using Cardoni for years, since that fateful day on the streets when Anthony met Peter Cardoni. Anthony had squeezed Cardoni for all he was worth, and now a special school full of ripe young men and women and convicts on the verge of grand criminal careers were among the business's many assets. As a ferret, he never quite knew what to expect, but with Peter Cardoni, Anthony Turntine had struck gold. Such vigilance and patience were the secret of the business's success, and Anthony Turntine knew this, biding his time. It was then when I realized that my own days were numbered, and that soon my time would come. But I would not be so easy, that I promised. Just as it had been before, it would be again in time.